Hey there folks, Paul Markle with Student of the Gun, and today we're going to talk about action versus reaction, reactionary gap, and so on and so forth. But before I talk about that, I want to talk about this product that I have on the table in front of me. This is the TR50, the TR50 from T4E, which is Training for Engagement Products. These are air guns that are made by Umarex. And this particular gun is a 50 caliber double action paintball revolver. And it uses these discs right here, six shot discs that hold 50 caliber paintballs. And of course, well, maybe not of course, but it is operated or powered by the typical CO2 powerlets that you can get at any hardware store or discount store or whatever. Okay. What's really exciting to me about this gun is because I've been around long enough to see things go full circle. Back in 1986, when I took my very first professional firearms training class with a man named John Farnham, it was a 40 hour, four day, 40 hour intensive training class and one of the things that we did was house clearing, room clearing, and force on force. And what we used at the time were six shot, 50 caliber paintball revolvers from Crossman. They looked, they were really big. They looked like a Colt Python, right? They were big Colt Python sized revolvers that shot 50 caliber paintballs and they used reloadable discs like this. I was pretty jazzed about it. I was pretty excited. It was 1986. Paintball was very, very new in the United States back then. It was in its infancy. And so was force on force training. Well, Crossman stopped making them. They stopped making those guns. They discontinued them a long, long time ago. And I was kind of bummed out because they were really simple. They were easy to operate. They weren't really expensive. And they were good training tools for force on force, you know, action versus reaction and so forth. Well, I just recently discovered that Umarex, through their company T4E, is making these training guns that are 50 caliber paintball guns. So, you know, 1986 to now, how many years that is, um, that's pretty neat for me. So what I decided to do is A, buy one of these, get it, use it, try it out, and demonstrate action versus reaction or reactionary gap. Now, years ago when I was a police officer, one of the many things I did as a police officer was I taught once a month for a while. I did this, uh, basically it was called car teens. It was a defensive driving class. Basically, if you were a teenager in Ohio, if you were 15, 16, 17, mostly 16 and 17, if you weren't an adult, and you got a moving violation and went before the juvenile judge uh, for speeding or running a red light or you got into a crash or whatever, he would send you to this remedial class taught by me, at least for a while it was taught by me, and I would have you for four hours on a Saturday and we would talk all about distractions, we would talk about reactionary gap, we would talk about action versus reaction. And one of the things that I tried to get through to these young skulls full of mush was that they needed to have a reactionary gap because human beings have what well, takes time for your brain to process information and then send the signal to your body to act to react what have you now if you're young you've got really good vision really good hearing really good senses your muscles are strong, your nerves are good, and you're expecting an action. If you're looking at something and you're expecting the action, your reactionary gap might be between a quarter and a half second. That's if you know it's coming. You say, okay, I know it's about to happen. Someone's gonna throw this or do this or whatever. And maybe you could get it down between a quarter of a second and a half if you know it's coming. But generally, we don't know it's coming, right? When it comes to carrying a firearm, a lot of people out there think, well, I'm good. You know, I go to the range a lot. I draw my holster, I draw from my holster a lot. You know, I'm good. Okay, you're good. 
All right, fantastic. So how long does it take to get from your concealed carry holster out and fire a shot? Some of you guys have shot timers. You're like, oh man, I'm great. With an exposed holster, with no safety device, no thumb snaps or what have you, some of you guys probably can get a shot off in less than a second. 0 0.89, 0 0.95, you know, 0.102, you shoot a 102, and then a 0.99, you're like, man, I'm good. I am good. I'm so good. Okay, that's fantastic. But in that situation, you know what's about to happen. It's not an unexpected stimulus. Your gun's not covered up, okay? And all you ha have is you have nothing in your hands, and you're looking at the target. Beep, you're expecting the beep. You hear the beep, you go down, bow, and you get a shot off in .95. And you high-five and your buddies, you're like, I am awesome. Here's the deal. If somebody has a gun in their hand and is within three, four, five feet of you, and they decide they're going to shoot you, that is an unexpected stimulus. You don't know that they're going to do it. You don't know when they're going to do it. They just decide to do it. Now, your brain has to process that information. Your brain has to process that information and tell your body to start moving. So let's say there's a person, a bad guy, and he has a gun down by his side, and you see him, and you're like, hey, stop. And he thinks, no, I'm not going to stop. He points the gun up and fires at you. How long does it take him to go from pointing at the ground to pointing at you and firing a shot? About a half a second or so, maybe a full second if he's slow. And you say, okay, he's slow, or I'm going to see it coming. By the time your brain realizes what's going on, oh, this is a deadly force situation. I better start moving. It's going to take you, if you're not doing anything, if you're not talking, if you're talking, that increases your reactionary gap. If there's something in your hands, if you're in the middle of performing a task, now you have to stop doing that, change gears, and start moving. You say, well, this is only fractions of seconds, half seconds, three quarter second, one second. That's not that big of a deal. If you have a one second draw when you're not covered up and you're not concealed, and let's just say for the sake of argument that you're not covered up, you're not concealed, you're in an exposed holster, no thumb snaps, no security, nothing. And you see the guy start to lift his gun up to shoot at you. It's going to take you about a half of a second to see that, realize what's happening, and tell your hand to go down to your holster. Then it's going to take you about, what, three quarters to a second to come out, extend, and shoot. It's going to take him about a half a second, maybe three quarters of a second, to decide to look at you, point the gun, and shoot. It's going to take you nearly twice as long. Yes, we're only talking about seconds, but gunfights are measured literally in seconds and fractions of seconds. Let's say you already have your gun out and it's in your hand. Gun's already out, it's in your hand, you're like, and you're pointing at the ground. And he's, and he's standing there and he's got his gun pointed at the ground. And he decides to shoot you. He decides to move. And you say, well, I'll see it and then I'll react. Again, let's say it takes you a half. Guess what? If you shoot him and he shoots you at the same time, you lose. Because you lose all ties. The only way you win is if you shoot him and he doesn't shoot you. What about if someone's turned away from you? Their back is to you, but they have a gun in their hand. How long does it take from them being turned around 180 to turn and fire? Or 90 degrees, they're facing this way, they're facing that. Their hands are behind their back. You don't know what's in their hands. Their hand comes out, there's a gun. So what I did is, and as you're watching this, I took this gun. This gun shoots these about 330, 350 feet per second which is way slower than even a 45 ACP, but it's fast enough that you can't duck uh, one of these. It's gonna be that fast. So here's the deal. I went out, I had Bob, my training dummy, and I loaded this up and I went through a bunch of those scenarios. The facing you gun down, facing away, hands, I even did the hands up. You know, hands up, don't shoot, right? Hands up with a gun, pow. How long is that? I'm going to have my producer, because I love my producer, 
I'm going to have my producer actually figure out the actual real time, because we can do that with video, down to one tenth of a second. Actually, one hundredth of a second. We'll go to one hundredth of a second, because I can guarantee you pretty much all of those are going to be one second or less. So, what's my point? My point is this. When you're reacting to action, you're always behind the curve, right? You should understand that. You're always behind the curve. So how do we mitigate that? We mitigate that with distance. The longer the distance between you and the bad guy, the better chance you have and the better able you will be to react. We put cover between us and the bad guy. And we do not allow the bad guy to stand there with a gun in his hand. Here's the reality of the situation. Do you know why police officers uh, will shoot you if you have a gun in your hand and they say drop it and you don't? Because almost every police officer that I know of has been through this kind of training. They've been through force on force reactionary training and they know if they say drop it and you don't and they just stand there staring at you, you can go pow and shoot them right there in the face. And most all of them understand that. So if they say drop it, you know, there are some schools out there that make you go to the range and they say drop it and you let your gun fall. The reason they do that is because if you're a good guy in civilian clothes and you just had a successful defend your life shooting, but here comes Johnny Law around the corner, doesn't know what happened. All he sees is a guy on the ground and you with a gun. He yells drop it. And if you don't, if you say, oh, hang on. No, no, I, I'm the good guy. Uh, this is my favorite Kimber Crimson Carry 3. If you do anything but open your hands and let that gun fall, you're going to get shot. Because that guy knows if he lets you do this, he's going to get shot. So ladies and gentlemen, if you're carrying a gun for a living, or if you're carrying a gun to save your life, if you're carrying a gun for concealed carry, and you're super impressed by your ability to get your gun out of your holster from concealment in 2.5 seconds, that's great. But if somebody already has a gun in their hand and they decide to shoot you, it's only gonna take them about three quarters of a second to do that. Action versus reaction. If you're going to carry a gun, you need to understand that. All right, that's it. I'm gonna climb down off my soapbox. For those of you that are looking for these, uh, I'll give you, once again, uh, they cost around a hundred bucks. Uh, it's the this is the TR50 model from Umarex or from a company called TR4E. If you want to check them out, check them out. We don't get any money from them, but what the heck? I am your friend Paul Markle from Student of the Gun. Remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life. <laughs>